first set the bar very high, and I, my talk will not be as entertaining as his. <laughs> I'm Ichi Lu, and uh, recently I moved to Cornell University uh, a few months ago. But the lead PI is Jen. Jen, uh, this week and next week, she is in Europe. So much, much better place than here. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's a no, no offense, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> we have done quite a few uh, upscaling projects, and uh, uh, my lab has done uh, basically take the data from Sevilla and then scale up to global dry land. I'll, I'll discuss that uh, in the next slide. And currently, my lab at Postdoc is doing so called the global trade analysis, and then put the trades observed at Sevilla in the context of a global, global context. Yeah, I try to understand the tra trade coordination. Tom Miller on the, uh, in the meeting and the, he, he's doing the biome transition across the vegetation type. And we also involved quite a few uh, uh, network of observations and, uh, and some of our uh, uh, meta-analysis. The major challenge at the Sevilla is basically we cannot uh, fly June, and uh, so that's a limit to the spatial analysis. So here, I, according to instruction, I need to give a specific examples. So this is the uh, study we have done. Basically, take the data from Sevilla and incorporate it into a model we call the dry land TICO model. The TICO model is basically is the terrestrial ecosystem model that's typical uh, by, uh, you know, by uh, ecosystem model developed by, by my lab. And uh, we use the data simulation and then incorporate, uh, incorporate more than 10 data sets uh, into the model, train the model. And then we uh, use that data train model I uh, conducted 8,330 8, model experiment and then use machine learning to scale up uh, to global scales. So we, uh, the main, main objective is to try to understand in the future when the uh, interannual variability in precipitation, if that, that interannual variability change, change, basically increase, how that will impact the ecosystem productivity on the on this uh, uh, on the right uh, left side is the historical uh, right side of the column is uh, the future predictions and uh, basically we use the you know uh, uh, quantify the uh, precipitation uh, variability and the impact on above ground uh, uh, net primary productivity. You can see at the board, uh, bottom panel, you can see that in the very, very dry, dry area, increased uh, internal variability of precipitation actually lead to increase in net primary productivity in so-called hyper-arid and arid land. But in those uh, uh, subhumid dry land, actually the above ground NPP is decreasing for either historical or the future. And uh, overall, the total global uh, uh, dry land, the productivity is increased as uh, indicated that in the black bar. So the actually the in increase, the, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's useful, <laughs> actually it's favorable for productivity. So our experience is basically currently we have a three modeling group that's interested in the, in the scaling up and uh, we, you know, we, we uh, combine the model data simulation machine learning and a global database to do. And the uh, last slide is basically, uh, we try to connect the broader scales and then have a global perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well,